Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to be a pick a card reading inspired by the Archangels, specifically tuning into them. I didn't really have a theme in mind for this reading, I just wanted to keep it open for whatever we are meant to hear right now. But when I finished dealing out the stacks of cards, I heard something primordial is rising. Something primordial is rising. And then I flipped up uh, the card that was at the top of the deck and it was the Fool. And I'm actually recording this. I don't even know what day it is. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's right after the Pisces new moon and about a week before the equinox. So Apparently, we are yet again sitting in a portal to something new. Um, I had been feeling Ten of Swords energy. In fact, I kept getting the Ten of Swords for the last week, and it wasn't so much that new things were beginning. It was just this message of something is ending, something is ending, something is ending, something is over, like done, done, done. Like really, really, I, I felt so called to just conclude like everything was such a concluding energy but that's starting to shift out and now we're kind of seeing what's going to be on the other side of our portal and i guess that's the theme of this reading i didn't know that until after i dealt the cards but <laughs> yeah i guess we'll find out what new world we are all entering into in this moment for whenever you uh, see this video. Absolutely timeless. This applies to you whenever. So go ahead and pick your card and I will see you in your reading. Hey, Paul One, welcome to your reading. <laughs> I suppose that you guys have recently gone through a massive purge of your heart chakra, really, really releasing whatever you were hanging on to, like resentments, people you couldn't forgive, uh, maybe not being able to forgive yourself, um, many, many quantum life, like baggage, so much baggage that had been dragging you back. I think you've just recently released that and that allowed you to pass through a portal into like this brand new, beautiful, feminine flowing paradigm. I, I was actually laughing when I was flipping up your cards because pink tourmaline for this, um, crystalline oversoul and like pink tourmaline, a very feminine crystal. And then you got the Empress, the Queen of Cups, and this very special card, um, Divine Wisdom, unique to this deck. But as you can see, this is very feminine. <laughs> this is like Hathor and Isis energy. And it is all about like claiming your <laughs> sovereignty and really knowing that your intuition will never lead you astray, like no longer needing anyone or anything to point you in the right direction this is like you always know like always always know radical trust in your own intuition and that's sitting in between the empress and the queen of cups this like i don't know you guys need a tiara or something because <laughs> you are owning 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 it owning everything everything about your spiritual path everything about your emotions everything about your relationships um, like this Vesca Pisces card kind of gives us a clue as to where or what is allowing you to feel this way. This is you have gained balance between your inner reality and your outer reality. Like perhaps in your past, um, you gave, I mean, this basically applies to everybody, right? You had been giving your power away. You had been relying on other people for a sense of direction, for a sense of self, or even just for information, like for facts. Um, this even counts uh, for like reading articles, like reading scientific art articles to, to figure out what you should think, all of that. Um, now your attention is entirely drawn inwards to reclaim your feminine intuition and really understanding that you are literally a goddess walking the earth and I mean, you can roll with that in whatever kind of new agey way you want, but I, I mean that quite literally. I feel like you guys are tuning into the fact that literally anyone, it doesn't matter who you are, and you don't even have to be a human, literally any consciousness can tune into the level of their own consciousness that is 
source that is God, that is the creator, that is the most high, whatever that is for you. Every single person, every, every single person can tune into that. And in that way, we are all manifestations of source or manifestations of divine or children of God, however you want to think about it. It's all the same to me. Use your words however you like. You're tuning into that level of like, <laughs> um, there's an acronym I recently came across, GFS, God Sovereign Free, or I guess it's a GSF, sorry, GSF, God Sovereign Free, God Sovereign Free. Um, and I've been kind of repeating that to myself. And <laughs> that that's where you guys are at. And I honestly don't even have a lot to say about this because you have portaled through to this new level of existence. <laughs> Where, where you're just this goddess walking the earth. I, I don't even know what else to add. I guess I'll have to get another deck. Let me see here. Okay. I mean, I could just leave your reading like that. I feel that this is maybe just supposed to confirm something for, <laughs> for some people that, yes, like, it really is over. Yes, it's really over. Um, whatever you recently let go of, you did actually heal that and... It was the right thing to do and you are moving on and just keep moving forward keep moving forward so let, let's see if we can just get something <laughs> um i mean I'm, I'm i'm happy to just praise you guys and tell you how awesome you are but let, let's see if i can get something <laughs> a little bit more for you <laughs> okay super moon emotions are running high yeah because of because of all of this feminine energy you're just exploding <laughs> this <laughs> super moon but i don't feel like this is too much for you to handle in fact i think in the past you might have been overwhelmed by this level of emotion but you're really just starting to like roll with it and really embrace it and feel like i keep seeing ocean waves like you are the ocean just rolling and rolling and rolling and you've expanded enough like expanded on many levels you've expanded enough to be able to hold this level of emotion and i think you're starting to realize how valuable your emotions are how valuable your emotions are and how they are the tools you need to use in order to get what you want so wield your emotions, wield your feelings, and surrender to the divine. I mean, that's what you guys are doing. You've got the Empress and the Queen of Cups, divine wisdom. You you guys are right there. This is, I think this is how you got there. This is saying, like, keep, keep rolling with it. I mean... <laughs> um surrender to the divine i feel like you guys are sitting there going like yeah because i'm the divine i'm the divine um and it's like it's not even an arrogance thing you, you guys aren't sitting there feeling like you are better than anybody else you're not feeling you might be feeling like you are channeling or currently manifesting more energy or more power than somebody else but it's not even a competition thing you guys are just so um like it's like it's not even about anybody else anymore. It's not about them. It's not about <laughs> anybody you know. It's not about any other type of energy. I, I feel like you guys are probably surprised that you're even watching this video because why would you even, like, care what I have to say? Maybe that's why I don't have much to say. It's just about this energy. And this energy is just reflecting back at you because you <laughs> are just looking in a mirror and you're allowing your own self-love, your own divine love for yourself to be reflected back at you. Um, so I'm just going to, I do close my eyes when I pull these cards. I'm just going to pull one and read you the channeled message on the back uh, just to give you something since there's not a whole lot to add here. Let me think. Sweet dreams. Here we have, um, again, the ocean, the full moon. You guys got full moons like three times. And, you know, a lot of you probably know this moonology deck. It's not like all of those cards are full moons. So <laughs> cozy up to the moment and snuggle into it. Set down whatever needs setting down and enter a state of release through a snooze. You may have been struggling to keep up with all that you've given yourself to do. 
and nothing more can be done right now. Hand over to the divine everything you have been mulling over. In a state of deep rest, you may receive symbols from your soul that offer solutions to your quandaries. At the very least, you may find that your mind is clearer and your emotions calmer upon awakening. Hence, you may see that problems are sometimes best approached by leaving them alone altogether. Give yourself permission to enter into the pleasantness of nap time and lovely dreams. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, you're awesome. Just keep being awesome. <laughs> Just keep rolling with it. Thank you for this beautiful blast of energy. I totally loved it. So rock on, guys. I'll see you later. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. You guys are trying to manifest something. I think for a lot of you, this is trying to get your like creative or spiritual project off the ground, whether it's like an artistic thing or a business or just trying to learn some skills so that you can do those in the future. That's what this is about. And I mean, we got this manifestation card right here. This is divinely aligned for you, the thing you're working on, because look at this golden light, this beam of light blasting down upon you. And with this, I can't say the name of this crystal, <laughs> hemiferite, hemimorphite, 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 <laughs> moving on. This is all this oversoul. This is like a crystalline oversoul card. The message from this particular crystalline oversoul is that the only thing holding you back is your limiting beliefs. Like this is here to remind you that if you can dream it, you can do it. Essentially, it's like all of the the blocks, all, all of the things that you're sitting there going, oh, that won't work or I can't do it or I'm too small or I don't have the right skill sets. It's all in your head. All you got to do is there's like already a key in the lock in your mind and you just have to turn it. It's, it's already in there. You just need to unlock it. <laughs> like just turn, turn the key for some of you imagining a key going into your pineal gland or just into your third eye. Just imagine it going in there and then unlocking something and retrieving your soul gifts because this is, this is your time. It's like your number has been called. <laughs> your time is now. <laughs> it is time to change the world. This is you. It's, it's your time. Um, like 10 of pentacles. This is what it's all about. It's all about getting that manifestation happening. And it's going to have a material like level to this. This is about like some kind of business or project, or it could be like a move or something, something trying to happen in the physical. And you're, you know, you're feeling kind of nine, nine of wands about it for now. Um, because it hasn't been happening. And, and as you, as you can see, it's like, there's a gap there's a gap and that's where you are right now. It's your soul star chakra or your eighth chakra, right? Just above your head. There's this gap. That's where you're sitting. It's like, here's the earth realm. Here's the higher realms and you're sitting in this gap. So what do you need to close the gap? Uh, well, Archangel Michael, <laughs> Ace of Swords comes through. Some of you working with Michael might be relevant. You can even Im you uh, just imagine this sword lighting up, like blazing, like electric fire blue, like like sapphire blue fire blazing. And you can use that sword to slice away the cords that are tying you down or to like dig out the limitations that are just like malware running in your imagination. I just... It's like, this is the time for it to manifest. This is the time. This is what you're supposed to be working on. This is what you're supposed to be focusing on. And it's like owed to you. It's owed to you to have this finally come around. So I'm going to grab some Oracle cards and see what do you need to know in order to manifest this? I keep coming back to that word primordial, primordial. This is to do with reclaiming your primordial soul gifts. So tuning 
That's why it's coming through from the archangels. You're tuning into the level of your own oversoul that is like parallel with the archangels. Some of you, if you feel like really, really connected to the archangels, like as if you're descended from them or if you are one of them, even like feeling that level of connection, it's because you, you're, that's how abstract your consciousness, I mean, is becoming. It's not that it's becoming that you're just remembering, you're reclaiming that layer. So I think there is going to be a filtering effect. Like I'm seeing there's this energy like winding down, winding down, winding down, trying to find you. So you will have to be a little bit patient on the timing. But of course, the timing right now is completely anybody's guess because we're speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up just faster and faster and faster. And um, we need to learn that like a new relationship with time. So you're going to have to let go, let go of timed expectations. So what can you do? Okay. Well, milk and honey. So I was asking for advice on like what you need to know, what you can do, but this is just, this is basically the 10 of pentacles. This is the land of milk and honey. This is, this is the, you have just passed into a portal where you're going to find your land of milk and honey or the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So I guess just some confirmation on that. Can we get some advice? Can we get some advice on what my beautiful soul family here needs to do in order to manifest <laughs> exchanging gifts. Okay. So this could be a like co-creative thing where, um, for, I, I think mostly on an energetic level, <sighs> making sure to be able to receive. I think most of you are really good at giving, <laughs> really good at giving your energy away and really good at just, you know, wanting to be of service, wanting to help in any way that you can, wanting to make sure that your art or that your business, that your services are accessible to everyone. But you need to make space to receive and you need to make sure that you are receiving as much as you are giving. <laughs> Sorry if there's a weird, awkward cut there. I got my train of thought got derailed. <laughs> so stepping back uh, into what I was trying to say is that this exchanging gifts, it reminds me a lot of Christmas, you know, say a bunch of people give you a bunch of gifts, gifts, and you don't have anywhere to put them, right? <laughs> You're sitting there staring at this pile of stuff you got for Christmas going, where am I going to put this all? That's what it's like in terms of your, this project you're working on. You need to have space to be able to receive the energetic return, whether that comes in terms of like um, people helping you out or if it's money, you need to have space for that, a spa space, to, uh, especially space for that energetically. Um, a huge, huge, huge thing I've been learning lately is that in order to receive abundance, right, we need to clear out a space for that. And most of us have like really crazy, weird blocks blocking our ability to receive abundance. I recently did a, like an abundance clearing and I saw that my whole body had been like inlaid with this disgusting looking black mesh. It was like really fine. Do you guys remember like old screen doors like from the 90s they were like you know black and like really kind of small and they always had that weird smell <laughs> i don't know i have such a specific memory of those things from when i was a kid um that that kind of mesh was like through my entire body and it, i saw it get ripped out and man that was really exhausting and it, a little bit painful and but after that i found that okay now there's room for like room to receive there's room for abundance to flow in so yeah, definitely. In order to receive your manifestation, you need to have room for it. So once you have created that space, once you have made room, then you will be able to act. Okay. Yang energy, masculine energy. Um, you guys do Reiki. <laughs> Look at this hand lighting up with fire. You're like literally just this hand and there's like fire coming out of your hands.
something also just about hand chakras. I keep seeing in my own hands that the hand chakra is like burnt out, completely burnt out from something that happened to me in like other lives. And if you guys are energy healers of any variety, something about healing your hand chakras. And I wish I could give you advice on that, but I'm working on that myself. So um, just throwing that out there so that you can feel into that. How, how, how can you heal your hand chakras? It will probably involve clearing or, or, you know, understanding something that happened in your past and coming to terms with it, like deep in your quantum lives, what destroyed your hand chakras? Because you will need to have that fully healed so that you can channel your manifestation into being so that you can channel your manifestation into being and for all of you working I mean it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be a business um it could be a whatever your creative project is to even if you never want to monetize it I've recently <laughs> learned that businesses are like 5d consciousnesses they really exist and they exist in 5D and they have consciousness, they have DNA, they are souls, they have a mission. And essentially when we're trying to run a business, we're channeling that consciousness. And I, I actually got to meet my business. <laughs> it, it was really cool. She looks like she has a, her heart is like a threefold flame of like turquoise, violet and gold. And she's turning on a fourth one, which is red and silver silver strands she's like a silver ball of all this like threads of silver light and then has these beautiful tentacles going off and she can go around and like flick like activate people like D -d 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 -d. <laughs> um and it's so interesting meeting her and that's why my youtube channel is called evermind oracle i i'm not the oracle i never wanted that and that's not what i meant when i came up with that name uh but I, then i realized that everyone's gonna think i was referring to myself as the oracle i was like no 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 the oracle is is this thing that we all look into to receive messages and as for why i named my channel evermind i was that was a that's a big long story essentially i was guided like i had very specific guidance to use that word and so i finally met her at the evermind oracle she's a 5d being and i've worked with her in other lives especially in ancient greece and it's like for her she has been like worked mostly with priestesses in other lives and in this life we're trying to figure out how she can operate in like a 21st century business so for anybody um trying to do a business thing especially if it's any kind of spiritual energetic business on really, really like try to meet your business and understand that she is a, like she or he or it, whatever is a 5d consciousness and you can communicate with them and just like you would anything else and learn how to become like the physical partner of your business entity <laughs> and <laughs> like the, the energetic um, consciousness of your business, you are its partner. So that I think will be massively potentiated is the word that comes to mind. There's lots of potential there to once you learn to communicate with the soul of your business, then you can really, really manifest things a lot quicker than you would otherwise. And, and things will also be much more like soul aligned, aligned to your soul, and it'll be much more fun and fluid and flowing and it won't feel like a job. It will feel like your life's purpose because it is. <laughs> so I think, I think that's it for you guys. So good luck on your manifestations. I know they will come through in perfect timing. So um, I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Paul three, welcome to your reading. Do you guys feel like you are either suffocating or drowning or somehow having your power extinguished? Essentially, it, it all comes down to throat and root chakra problems. Um, I just saw you guys standing on like this side of a portal and there are cords holding you back from passing through so when i the very beginning of the video i felt like we were going to receive messages about what 
kind of world we have just arrived in, like what is on the the new side of the portal. Um, but I don't think you guys have quite passed through it yet. There's something holding you back. I mean, you're you're so close, you're almost there, and you're going to get through the portal by turn by tuning inwards, right? By turning inwards, by tuning in. It's all within. It's this hermit card. This hermit card is the big key. I mean, hermit and soul song. This is all about owning your own power and letting your voice be heard and knowing that there's there's nothing outside of you that you need. You are enough. You have everything you need. You have done enough. There's nothing more you need to do. There's nothing more you need to find. There's nothing more you need to gain. You are enough. You are enough. That's also what this Amber card is about. This Amber Oversoul. The message from this Oversoul is essentially you are enough. You are enough. You are enough. <sighs> yeah, it's it's like you know, we got five of pentacles and four of pentacles down here. So, I mean, a lot of you are probably worrying about money. Feeling naked and exposed. And also, if you look, this person over here is like clutching their throat. So root chakra, throat chakra. It's just... But you need to... There's something you need to break free of. Break free of what is holding you back. What is holding you down. I mean, on a certain level, it is just you know, more limiting beliefs that are coming up to be released. I feel like you guys have so much power. Like I can feel you like a ball of fire, just like glowing and like pounding, like trying to get let out of something like you're really frustrated. Um, but I feel like you're asking someone to help you. Like imagine, imagine if you're like literally trapped in a ball and like you're pounding on the wall of the ball <laughs> and you're like, let me out, let me out, let me out. And you're waiting for somebody to come and like cut open a hole so that, that you can get out. But you don't actually need anyone to let you out. That's why you're having this incredibly frustrating experience. It's so that you learn or remember. It's so that you remember that you don't need anybody to free you. You don't need anyone to give you your power back. You don't need to, anybody to give you any information. There's You have all of the keys and all the tools and all of the wisdom and all of the knowledge, all of the gifts, all, they're all inside of you. I was going to say they're all inside your bubble with you, but it's not even that. They're like literally inside of you. So if you need to punch your way through that bubble, you can just punch your way through or you can chew your way through, right? <laughs> you use your nails. You can scrape your way through. You can get through. And that's, it's like as soon as you really go on this hermit journey, you know, you're lost in this cave, just keep going forward. Keep, keep moving. Keep going forward one step at a time. Eventually you do get through. Um, I need to play you guys another card. I feel like you guys are screaming at your higher self, you know, like shaking your fist at the heavens and that's okay. <laughs> I've been known to do that myself, to shake my fist at the heavens and kind of scream at the archangels or the higher dimensional beings and basically anybody who's willing to listen. Some, and uh, sometimes that makes me feel better. <laughs> you know, so it, that's okay. They can handle it. They don't mind if we scream at them. But what I have been learning is that when I do that, I actually delay the outcome for myself because I got an image about this the other day, actually. It's like by shaking my fist at the heavens and screaming up at whoever's listening, I, I bore a hole, like I, I open a channel of communication, but then it's like I'm too busy screaming through it to hear what they're saying. You know, imagine if you're just screaming into a phone then you, if you, you can't hear what the other person is saying until you shut up, right? And in terms of screaming at the universe, it's like you can't receive the help that you have summoned until you chill out <laughs> and, and, and until you just go into receptive mode. So yeah, I'm going to pull from the Starseed Oracle here just some further advice for you guys. The Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations, Tapestry of Life, Expression. So this is Pleiadian energy for everyone of you who is a starseed. 
before I talk about that, I'm going to pull a second one as well. Or we're getting, we're getting two. Okay. <laughs> cosmic heart devotion potency make your life a moving prayer and the great severing mars energy anger conflict softening to love this is the it's the card that came out last but really this is the first phase this is how you free yourself of this five and four of pentacles this these like cords that are holding you back softening to love softening to love i feel like there is something you're kind of bitter about that you need to let go of. And I think it might be something that makes you kind of scream at the TV <laughs> um, going, how can I ever forgive somebody for that? Or how can I ever let go of that? This is, this is so painful. It's happened to me so many lifetimes or this thing is just so horrible. It's impossible to let go of it. It's impossible to let go of it. That's, that's how I feel you guys are, are, are replying to me and, and that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, um, feel feel your feelings for sure. The seven star sisters, feel your feelings, feel your feelings and express your feelings. You need to get them out. Even if your feelings are some, maybe even if you're going to regret it later, it's probably worth just let, letting it out, letting it out. Find yourself an outlet. Journaling, screaming into a pillow, um, you know, a six pack of beer, whatever you need to do to really let those feelings out because there's like black feelings. And I don't mean like, you know, really black evil feelings. I just mean like sludgy, gross, nasty, stagnant, stale, festering feelings that have been there for like <laughs> at least a few dozen lifetimes, possibly hundreds of life lifetimes, like stewing in your chakras, particularly your root and your throat chakra. There's this sludge stewing in there and you need to flush that out. So for your throat chakra, in order to clear that out, the best thing you can do is just express yourself. I've really found out with the throat chakra. Sure, you can do, if you like to do any kind of energy work, just focus on your throat chakra in whatever way you love. That is perfect to do that. But you might find it just most effective just to literally express yourself, especially in a way that uses your voice. <laughs> um, that, from my experience, is by far the most effective way to clear out throat chakra issues. It's like, I don't know, for some reason, the throat chakra, I think it's because it's so connected to our voice that physically expressing our voice really clears that out faster, even than any kind of energy work, no matter how powerful the healer. So express yourself, um, express what you're angry about, express what you're resentful about, because this thing might need to be expressed in order to be released. And then, of course, it's all about softening to love. This Mars card it's kind of about looking at the thing that has been plaguing you for so long and just realizing that you can just let it go. You can just let it go, let it float away, let it wash away, let it wash away, softening to love. When you have a, that you, you'll have a moment or you'll probably have many of these moments and it's up to you how many you have They'll keep presenting themselves until you decide to really um, take that path. You'll keep having these opportunities where you will be given a choice. You'll be able to choose to stay the course of anger and bitterness and resentment and feeling suffocated and feeling scared about money and scarcity issues and all of that. You can keep doing that or you can choose love. <laughs> so you can choose fear and bitterness and anger or you can choose love there's going to be like the universe is going to orchestrate it to present you with these opportunities and every time you can choose love even if it's like half of love even if it's like okay i'm just going to try to be compassionate i'm just going to try to be loving even if you're just trying that's great you just do whatever you can do and then you're going to get better and better and better at it until i was thinking about this card all day actually i'm glad it came up the cosmic heart, devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. This is where you're heading when you finally um, complete this healing journey you're on and you, you come out of the cave, you come out of the hermit's cave because you've, you'll have, <laughs> you will complete your hermit journey. You will complete your hermit time and you will come out and then, and then the cosmic heart, you will be this It'll be a new experience of living your life because suddenly you'll wake up every day and things will be magical and things will be serene and things will be peaceful and things will be loving and exciting and you'll have a peace in your heart and your heart will glow and you will not have believed how good life can be. <laughs> so that is where you're heading. It's like, 
it's just because of the wave that you're on right now, just this part, there's just, it's like a healing period, really focusing on your throat and on your root and, and on your heart because of this card. So you're, you're doing a lot of work. <laughs> Essentially, you're doing a lot of work. And another thing with this Pleiadian energy here, it's about learning that's it's that classical like buddhist saying where pain is inevitable but suffering is optional getting it into your really like absorbing it into your consciousness that just because something hurts doesn't mean you need to keep suffering from it you can just like take the hit you can just oh that like that may be really emotional that really hurt my feelings or that was triggering me you can just like feel it and then let it go you don't need to keep suffering from it um or if there's something in your environment, it, it maybe it's maybe it's not even your personal life. Maybe it's you know global events, you know the environment, um, animal rights, whatever it is for you. Something that really really triggers you and pains you and keeps you suffering. This is learning to understand that constantly being in anguish because of external events. That's a choice. That's a choice. And you might feel well, other people are suffering, the planet is suffering, so I need to keep suffering. I know it feels that way. I, I used to be in that spot and sometimes I still am in that spot, right? It's not like we snap out of this perfectly, but there's, there's a journey to this and it's important that we all start learning going, okay, yes, horrible things over there, bad, hate, makes me feel bad. I feel horrible. I feel anguished because of it, but you can step out of that. You can pull your energy right back out of that and you can create your own bubble. <laughs> you can create your own energy and you don't need to keep suffering. And, and it's like, on some level, you feel that you need to suffer along with others to show them that you care or to show that you are a good person or to show that you have the right emotional reactions to things. Um, but you don't need to be in that energy all the time. You can be sitting in your own energy. And that is why you're going through this whole experience it's to learn to sit in your own energy, to learn to go entirely within and cultivate your own inner strength and like your own energetic environment. This is teaching you energetic sovereignty, learning your own energetic environment, like knowing that everywhere you go, you can be in your own bubble and you can interact with and empathize with and feel sorrow for, for the world around you. But then you can instantly, as soon as you choose, come back into your energetic sovereignty. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll leave it at that. So hang in there, guys. Good luck. And remember that, you know, tuning into the cosmic heartbeat, the life breath of consciousness itself, that can bring you so much peace and an end to your suffering if you tune into the cosmic heart. So good luck, guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hey, Paul Four, welcome to your reading. I just picked up your cards and I was just feeling them in my hand. I didn't know what any of them were yet. And I felt like, oh, this is the pile that's going to be really intense. <laughs> and I flip it up and, you know, I see Garnet and Awakening and then the high fucking priestess. <laughs> so here we go. First of all, like the, the reason this Garnet card caught me so intensely is that this is like an upgrade to your root chakra in a weird way. Like the words that go along with this card, like in the booklet is the divine spark, the divine spark, but it's also a root chakra like energy. So this is to me is about literally getting more of your higher self embodied in your physical vessel. This is like a massive and it, it's an awakening, right? <laughs> this is like a new, a new level of spirituality, a new level of consciousness. And it's about the new earth, essentially, you know, whatever that means to you, however you want to roll with that. In my current kind of visualization of the shift in consciousness, I feel like it is really, really incredibly important that we, <laughs> I want to say like cram, like stuff it in, right? But of course, we don't want to be stuffing our consciousness into our body. We want to be expanding and making as much space as we can in order to 
receive more of our own consciousness in our bodies. And that is how we change the world. <laughs> that is how we change the world. And that I think has been the plan all along. I've been really reading lately about how like the very earliest like epochs on earth, you know, beings were completely non-physical. They just had these ethereal like energy bodies, right? And we've been trying and trying and trying for this whole time <laughs> to manifest our physical bodies. And here we are, we, we, we've we done it. We have physical bodies, but um, in the process, what did we lose? Well, we lost uh, all of our connection to, <laughs> I mean, not all of it, right? But a damn near lot of it. We lost so much. We became so disconnected from ourselves, from our higher selves, from our own souls, from our consciousness. Um, some of us more than others, you know, I say that as somebody who right before I woke up, I was an atheist. So like I was completely disconnected, right? Um, and we're also disconnected from our bodies. Like we don't have sovereign control over our bodies. We like our bodies have all kinds of things going around with them all the time. And we feel like we have no control over it. So this is, that's why I feel like th this is so important to get more of our consciousness embodied and to really upgrade our relationship with our bodies because that's what we want the future of Earth to be like, isn't it? Don't we want to be like divine emanations of source consciousness walking around with like a superhero body? <laughs> you know, and I, I mean that in terms of just how we look, having a, like control um, or at least influence over our appearance, um, being able to manifest our bodies however we want them, but also having them being completely physical because that's so fun and that's so empowering. This is our vessel. This is our vehicle, right? On depending on what perspective you're looking at the universe from, the human physical body is essentially w the most extreme layer of our light bodies, right? We tend to think of it as like the lowest level of our bodies. If you think of all the layers of your light body, it's like, oh, well, our physical body is the lowest and the most fallen and the farthest away from the source of all, all consciousness. But on the other perspective, it's like, well, it's also the body that we traveled this far to create we we went through all of this we we traveled this far we created matter we came this far and created our physical bodies so that from that from like the perspective of source it's almost like our physical bodies are the greatest thing we have ever accomplished so that's what you guys are tuning into and really understanding that in order to continue to progress on your spiritual journey it's going to involve a much higher level of connection with your body. And I wish I could give you tons of advice on how to do this, but I'm of course learning this for myself right now. So <laughs> we are all going through this together and seven of pentacles. I think this has all been stewing in our minds for a little bit. The seven of pentacles is a waiting energy, waiting, 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 but waiting as we tune into our bodies, tuning into our bodies and I don't know if it's been happening for you guys, but for me, my like meditation practice has changed. I find that I just don't feel inspired to do it that often. I used to meditate every day and now I might meditate like once a week. <laughs> and I've been kind of been wondering like, what what is that? And I've been realizing that I have been doing other things that are meditative to me, but don't really count as meditation in a traditional way. But I feel like that so it's like I'll, I'll be dancing in my living room or something or just listening to music and really like channeling the energy and like sending it out from my hands like all into the, like the into the collective right doing things like that and I think I'm naturally gravitating towards more embodied spiritual practices like that like I've been doing walking meditations or just like standing bare feet in the park on the grass stuff like that because those things anything that anything that more actively involves our bodies will help us embody our consciousness more also meditating depending on how you're meditating i guess can you know take you out of your body and when i first started meditating i was having all kinds of out-of-body experiences where i was completely leaving my body like <laughs> just like oh gone where the hell did i go oh i went through a, I saw the light and went through a tunnel like i was gone right um and that's kind of stopped happening and i started to feel kind of sad like well, how did I lose the ability to do that well I realized I when I first woke up I had to have those experiences because I needed to get connected with higher realms and I needed to go through so much healing 
um, and it needed to happen up there. But right now it's important for us to be in our bodies. So if any of you are feeling like your meditation practice is suffering or that you're not connecting uh, like in the same way you used to, that's what it's supposed to be because you're supposed to be in your body, but you're not like nothing has gone wrong. You haven't lost anything at all. If anything, you are embodying the divine so much more fully. You are this high priestess energy. Oh, who is the high priestess? The high priestess is essentially, you know, an aspect of the goddess in a human body. That, <laughs> that, that is the whole point. You are this conduit. You are this physical channel of high priestess energy. So you haven't lost anything and you're doing everything exactly the way you're supposed to. And there's... <sighs> the only thing is this high priestess card is bookended by two waiting cards. Seven of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. These are both wait, waiting, 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 waiting. I feel like this is all percolating. Of course, we're not going to be able to go through these massive shifts in our bodies and even our energy bodies immediately. So there is this waiting that's happening. But also with this Hanged Man, you can kind of see some of the parallels between these two cards, right? The High Priestess has these two pillars. And this hanged man has this, these two trees and they both got crescent moons in the back. This hanged man is also seeing things from an entirely different viewpoint. I feel like you're going to be getting a new way of experiencing and looking at your spirituality. And for a bit there, you might start to question yourself going, oh, I am receiving my inner guidance and I feel so in tune with my inner guidance system and I trust my intuition so much more than I ever have but now I'm getting all these weird messages like maybe they're really weird like really really weird like so weird you don't even want to tell anybody about them because they might th even other spiritual people even people that you're <laughs> like that you really really resonate with they may be like oh now now you've gone too far now you've gone off the deep end now you're too crazy right um you know <laughs> or maybe the advice is just really weird you know maybe the messages you're receiving are like weird in a different way like that just doesn't make any sense and you're like they're so you know illogical like if you receive a message or you you know you receive guidance and you feel like it's real and you feel like you trust it and it says if you want to be rich you have to quit your job and you're like that doesn't make any sense right? <laughs> that makes no sense so that's like the opposite it's because you're going to be challenged to completely do things in a totally brand new way. And you might, it's like there's noise from your mind, like flickering around your head. And but that's just like your mind trying to distract you and trying to tell you to keep doing things the way you have been doing them before. But it's like, it's not going to work. <laughs> your old habits and old ways of doing things aren't going to work anymore because this is, this is like another level of your awakening. And you guys are already so awake. You're already so awake. You've already had probably a few already, like levels of your awakening. But here it is again. And you might be thinking, wow, I just had leveled up last month or last week or yesterday. And here it is again. That's because of how fast we're evolving right now. And it's like for each and every one of us, we're all going through this kind of pattern together. But we're all on very, 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 very individuated and unique journeys to the point where even if we share them with each other, it's like we see the kind of energetic similarities of the vibration, but they're manifesting in such unique ways that we're really like, we're all in this together in some way, but our stories are so unique. We might be feeling the same energy, but really having it manifest in our lives in different ways. So the point of this, I think, is to bring us back to owning the fact that we are the high priestess or high priest or whatever, right? You, that we are these sovereign channels, these sovereign channels of our own consciousness. And yeah, if you guys have been tuning into like incredibly abstract layers of reality to the point where you, you might have a moment where you go, wow, did I just ascend and break through to a layer of consciousness that nobody else has even ever thought of you might have moments where you feel like you're the most enlightened person th on the planet <laughs> and i mean it doesn't even matter if that's true or not true right this isn't it's not a competition it's not a comparison game so if you feel that way 
you can feel that way. It's because that is how high you are piercing. And even if there are other people who have pierced that layer of consciousness, they did it in a different way and had a different experience. And of course they did because there's in like, we're all here to have a different experience. So <laughs> it's like almost like the messages here is to be as <laughs> almost like be arrogant. I don't really, I don't mind telling that to you guys because I don't feel like you would suddenly just become a bunch of arrogant assholes. If anything, you probably need to be less humble, at least just in, you know, the privacy of your own mind because <sighs> you are here to bring God down to earth. It's like, if you imagine my, like this left hand is earth and my right hand is whatever you th can think of as the most abstract, highest level of consciousness, whatever that is for you, <laughs> you came from up here and here you are on earth and you're here to like bring them together, to bring them together. And as you notice, I didn't, you know, didn't do an up and down, right? We think that the most high and source and God is up here and earth is down here. But lately I've been seeing that they're actually side by side. They're side by side. So it's not even an up or down. <laughs> it, it's that the highest realm, the highest layer of consciousness and the earth realm are just like two hemispheres of the brain there. It's almost like they're left and right. There are two hemispheres of the brain. And yeah, the image I'm seeing is like higher realms here, earth is here and they're like equals They're left and right hemispheres of the brain and you're bringing them together. And then you're going to learn to stitch up, like stitch the middle together to really harmonize the hemispheres. Like, do you know, I'm sure you guys know how the brain works, right? You got left and right. And they're, they just have a thin connection, right? There's, I can't remember what it's called, but there's that part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres. And you guys are, once you get the two halves put together, you're going to be like zipping them up. And you do that by traveling between, you know, left and right. You're going to be zipping them up, zipping them together by traveling. You travel from the earth realm to the higher realms, the earth realm to the higher realms, back and forth, back and forth. And the more embodied you get and the more empowered you get at the same time zips it together brings it together and then till suddenly there will just be one there will be one brain <laughs> that is no longer split so you're healing zipping together bringing together the most extreme layers of consciousness and reality by embodying yourself <laughs> by getting your consciousness into your body it's i just keep seeing like a funnel right you're funneling your consciousness down into your body And since this relates to me so personally as well, I am very curious, what can we do? <laughs> you got any advice for us, Oracle cards? What can we do to help ourselves embody more of our higher consciousness? Blessed. <laughs> number 22, my favorite number. But this card doesn't give us a ton of advice now, does it? But that's kind of perfect because the message that goes along with this card is essentially everything's working out perfectly. There's nothing more you need to do. And you can absolutely expect to just have everything magically work out. Like this is literally you are blessed. This is like a blessing coming in. This is <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, guys. This is expect something magical to happen. It's all outside of your human control. The higher levels of your consciousness got this. Everything is already falling into place. It's like your higher self is already, you know, on higher levels, you are already doing it all. It's all already happening and you're just waiting for it all to unfold. So there's nothing in particular to do except to just Hold your awareness with this hanged man. Just hold your awareness and sit in the observer state. Root chakra work can help. You know, time in nature can help. 
but I, I feel that the only real challenge here will be waiting on the perfect cosmic timing. <laughs> waiting on the perfect cosmic timing, knowing that you have already done the work and everything is about to fall into place exactly when it is meant to be because the blessings are already written for you and they are just falling into place like rain <laughs> falling into place like rain so carry on guys <laughs> thank you so much for connecting with me and i will see you guys all later bye